King Player TV. Today we have a special guest here at King Player TV. We'd like to have everybody introduce themselves. So go ahead and let everybody know out here at King Player TV land All right. who you are. My name is Tony Salazar. I'm a musician here in Toledo. I'm in a band called Sugar Packs and a band called Glass Town. And I also do just a bunch of solo stuff and I'm a loop, I'm a loop guy. And yeah, uh, uh, Tony Salazar. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a pretty good guitar today. It looks pretty good. I almost got a green one. It looks pretty sweet. But uh, so we'd like to uh, start with a couple questions. Uh, we won't keep you too long, but we like to start with the what, the why, the how long, and that kind oh, of stuff. Man. So what made you get into music, Tony? Oh man, just uh, I've been uh, just around musician my whole life. My my dad was a musician. He played guitar and was a singer in his band, and he always had gear laying around the house and like we always had like video games and stuff but then I'd get bored with those and then I'd just pick up a guitar because I always got bored with everything else and yeah just uh, I always had guitars and stuff around and drums and everything and I just kind of that that's what I did for fun gotcha. growing up yeah gotcha so how long did you say you've been playing guitar uh I've been playing like my my whole life really like there's pictures of me playing when I was two years old and but I really uh I really wanted to start learning around age 11 or so. That's when I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play guitar around 11 or so. Yeah. Okay. Well, so those formal lessons, or you just teach yourself? Yeah, I just taught myself. Uh, it was a, uh, it was weird. I just tried to play what was on <laughs> the CDs I had, but I was a big like Corn and Limp Biscuit fan. <laughs> so like my music theory was just out of whack from the start. <laughs> so like I tried to play Corn stuff, and it like they don't, uh, none of it made sense. So like I didn't know what I was doing for the long, for the longest time. Okay, so you you mentioned Corn and Limp Bizkit. Who influenced you in the early years? What besides those guys, as far as guitar playing goes, or music? Who inf who influenced you? Early I, uh, I was uh, my first concert was actually Motley Crue, and I was about eleven years old, and that was really uh, that was really life changing. Motley <laughs> so yeah, Mick Mars from Motley Crue. Just I had I knew the whole Doctor Feelgood album by heart, and like that was that was uh, my early. That was like my first favorite band was Motley Crue. So I guess yeah. Gotcha. Just rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> I had a friend of mine named Dennis Monholland when I was a junior in high school. Okay. And I first, I, well, I was started getting serious when I was, I don't know, seventh grade or eighth grade. When I got to be in high school, I watched Dennis play. All right. And he would always play Motley Crue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doctor Feel Good and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. So when I got to be a junior, I finally got the nerve up and I asked him to teach me how to play those chords. Nice. So yeah, yeah. That's where I learned about wow. Motley Crue. Yeah, yeah, man. So you talked about nationally. How about locally? Uh, is anybody, any anybody influenced you locally for, oh, as far man. as guitar goes? Um, Johnny Rodriguez is a big uh, influence. Uh, I was in, uh, I was in like metal bands and stuff. And uh, for like 15 years, writing my own songs, playing my own gigs, and like opening for like bands that come around here and stuff, it was awesome. And then my sister uh, formed Sugar Packs, and then their guitar player left, and then they needed a guitar player. So then she's like, my brother plays and sings and stuff. So that's how I auditioned. But then after a while, I was like, I think I can play some gigs by myself. I think I could do that, like some solo stuff. That might be cool. And then I was like, dude, Johnny Rodriguez, man, he's killing it all the time for yeah. years. I was like, that's like, that would be sweet to get on that level. So like, I guess like, first come to mind, solo stuff, Johnny Rodriguez, man, he yeah. kills it. Yeah, he kills it. Johnny's been around for a long time. So that name's yeah, been yeah. around for a long time. Yeah. Great, great musician. Yeah. So back up for a second. Your sister made you audition for her band? Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. That's right, that's right. I had to learn like she, five songs. 
she made you go through audition. Yep, yep. That's hardcore. A, yeah, I had like a week to learn five songs. I was like, all right, let's do it. Right. <laughs> so you mentioned Sugar Packs, and you mentioned your other band. What's the other band's name again? We call it Glass Town. We've Glass only been around for maybe ju just under a year now, so we're pretty new. And yeah, we're just like pop covers with like a rock feel, maybe maybe a bunch of rock covers, and I don't know. It's fun. It's all like dancey stuff, good fun time. Okay. We're there to like have have fun. Yeah. Gotcha. Talk to me about the difference between the two. You mentioned Sugar Packs and, and Glass Town. What's the difference between the major difference between the two? Uh, Sugar Packs, uh, we have first of all we have a female lead singer in Sugar Packs and a keyboard player, so we uh, it's like uh, more of a poppy feel, I guess, like a like a radio pop, more pop songs, I guess. And Glass Town, there's no female vocals and there's no keyboard player, but there's two guitar players, bass and uh, drummer or whatever, and we have two lead singers who are both the guitar players. Both the guitar players are the lead singers, and yeah, it's just like it, we're all like around the same age, and uh, they're all like old friends from high school and stuff, and like yeah, we're just, we're, yeah, we're all we all been around, and yeah, we're all ready to rock and yeah, party, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. So you're a guitar player. Mm -hmm. I'm a guitar player. Talk to me about the dynamics of having two guitar players in a group. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's cool. It, like for the longest time in Sugar Packs and previous bands, I was really like the only guitar player a lot of the times. And I never thought of myself as much of a guitar player, honestly. Like, I, it's hard for me to improvise solos. That, like, I, I know what I'm doing, but I don't know how to explain what I'm doing. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> me too. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, having another guitar player, uh, Jeffrey Oliver is our other guitar player in Glastown. And uh, yeah, he's a good guitar player, great singer. And yeah, he just feels, we feel in... I don't know. Every, I don't know. Whatever he lacks, I'm filling in. Whatever I lack, he fills in. And and sometimes he'll just grab an acoustic, and that's all he needs. It's just like just an acoustic, and I'll I'll do the rest or whatever. Like, yeah, it's it's cool. Just two guitar players. We can do we can do keyboard parts on a guitar if need be. It's it's cool. I don't know. We're figuring it out. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. That's cool. So tell me who you would consider right now is your favorite artist. Hmm. Oh man, that that changes a lot all the time. Uh, um, I'm really into Tommy Emanuel right now, the guitar player. The Great guitar, guitar player. Yeah. Incredible. I've been into him for a, a few years, but I, like the last two weeks or so I've been really into him. <laughs> just like listening to him a lot, just like this last month or so. Uh, that, so that's like right now, off the top of my head. Uh, Mike Dawes, D-A-W-E-S, he's another just acoustic guy. But he's like the kind that's like all over the guitar and like yeah. both hands and like, yeah. he's, he's awesome right now. And, yeah, uh, I don't know. Those those are acoustic guys anyway. I, I was always, I've always been a fan of uh, Wes Borland from Limp Bizkit. Yeah, he's uh, he's I've always like liked his tone and his like little effects and his echoes and it just like his real. I don't know. I just always loved his stuff. And, yeah, yeah. Now, I'm all all over the place right now, but I keep coming back to Eric Gales. Yeah, I, yeah. No matter what, I just keep this guy. Just when I think he's done, <laughs> yeah. the impossible. Yeah, there's a video that comes out, and I just <laughs> makes me want to just sell all my stuff. <laughs> yeah, really. And just start something else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's incredible. <laughs> so if we go out into your vehicle right now, and we play, turn on the radio. Mm. What's in your playlist? On the way here, I was listening to uh, "Here Come the Mummies," the, the funk. They're all mummies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been get, I got into them a few years ago. I was listening to Bob and Tom in the morning. I was yeah. at work and. They, they were on the show and they were playing like these great funk songs with like a hint of comedy in there and yeah. I was just like, I love comedy music, that's like my favorite. Tenacious D, Stephen Lynch, Here Come the Mummies, Psycho yeah. Stick, they're all like great, it's all great music but it's comedy songs, like it's great, it's great. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, I like Bob and Tom too, it's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you needed to write a piece of music, Ooh. what music would you use to inspire you right now to write? Hmm. Um, well, most of the music I've ever written has been like heavier stuff, like rock stuff. Um, I would like to write some beautiful acoustic stuff with like no vocals or something. I've been kind of daydreaming about that lately, but once it, whenever I pick up something, I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, that, right now, like that, I'd, I'd love to write like something really pretty on a on an acoustic. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Talk to me about what you think, uh, what's your thoughts on the current music scene locally? Oh man, uh, yeah, it's it's actually doing pretty well right now. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Live TV, folks. Yeah. Live TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, I, I've been around the Toledo music scene for about 20 years now. I, uh, yeah, about 20 years I've been playing around. And for a while there, uh, it was like gone for like good three, four years. Frankie's was closed down for a couple of years and nobody was really playing anywhere. And then it came back and uh, yeah, right now it's, uh, yeah, it's doing pretty well. Even like the original scene, like it, people are selling out Frankie's and the Civic Music Hall or whatever, all like all the time and uh yeah and even the cover band scene it's like it's great downtown's popping all the time and it's great right now i think it's yeah it's doing pretty well right now yeah, yeah. it's going well yeah it's going well yeah. there's a lot of room for uh bands to get out there and do stuff yeah um you just gotta know what you're doing when you get there yeah, yeah. that's all right <laughs> gotta do it. Gotta book it. <laughs> so if you uh if you were in front of a judge or if you're being judged by a panel group and they said all right tell me you got one lick to play, oh, and your life depends on it. Oh man, what is that lick you're gonna play? Oh man, <laughs> um, maybe my version of the solo to uh, Santeria by uh, uh, Sublime. <laughs> I just like that's what I noodle on every time I pick up a guitar. I just is that right? I, I well, don't you know, know, listen. Everybody doesn't know what Sublime is, so you gonna have to show us what it is. Okay, yeah. It's I don't know. I just do this all the time when I pick up a guitar. It's my I don't know. I don't play it right. Sometimes I don't know names of songs. Oh yeah, yeah. I just hear it and kind of. I remember. forgot it was in drop B and like. <laughs> and I've rehearsed that a bunch, and so like none of that was improvised. I I just learned that one time. <laughs> tell the secrets. Tell the secrets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, not now how long have you had this Gretsch right here? Talk to me about this. Oh Gretsch. man, um, I just got this recently. Um, what happened was I was playing acoustic shows. I was like, a, I'm a I'm a loop artist. Or artist, I can say. You have to have the quotations. <laughs> I'm a loop <laughs> artist, and uh, I was playing acoustic guitar and like beating on the strings, making beats out of that, and playing along and like gigging all the time, just everywhere, everywhere I can. And uh, my just like acoustic just got like too difficult. Like man, I'm playing like all the time, and and uh, I was like maybe if I instead of looping me beating on the guitar, maybe I can get a cajon and mic that up and loop me beating on the cajon, and then I won't have to. I could play an acoustic or an electric guitar if I wanted to, because I, in my opinion, electric is physically easier to play than an acoustic. I, I think that too. I think yeah. that too. I agree. So, I was like, maybe I'll just do that. So I got a hollow body Epiphone, much like this one, only red, and uh, I was playing that for a little while instead of an acoustic guitar to try to like, I don't know, it's still an electric, but it kind of is it's warm like an acoustic guitar. It'll do it. And then I just thought one day, like this guitar is just too big for me, I'm kind of a small guy, and the, that Epiphone ES-335 was just too long and too wide for me, especially when I'm going down to hit the cajon, so I was like, this, I saw this Gretsch at the store, and I was like, man, I was like, that's almost just like that one, it was, a, it was a great price, and I actually ended up trading my Epiphone for this one, because it's a little bit shorter and smaller, and it's a hollow body, and it has a Bigsby, <laughs> yeah. and like I could just reach the cajon better. So yeah, that's why I got this, and I only got this maybe a week or two ago, and I'm loving it. I'm finding that uh, my Epiphone, that 335, is a little bit big for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm a bigger guy, but yeah. it kind of makes you work a little harder. Yeah, yeah, And you get a little tired, your arm gets a little tired, <laughs> it's a little bit bigger for me. So. Yeah, yeah. But that, yeah, I looked at the yeah. Gretsch, the Gretsch yeah, looks yeah. pretty nice. I can so, hold over it, yeah. Sounds good, yeah, yeah. So, speaking of that Gretsch and being one of your new uh, guitars, if you were on a desert island, hmm. what would be your number one guitar you would take? Man, that's a great question. Uh, I, uh, I was one of the Les Paul growing up, and I never had one until recently. I finally got my first Gibson Les Paul, and... I don't know, that's really my favorite guitar right now. I guess, I mean, that that could, that might be it right now. Just, 
today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Les Paul. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So you taking a Les Paul to the desert island? <laughs> yeah. I think it's over there. Behind. There you go. <laughs> now you took the Les Paul with you. Mm -hmm. What is the fig What is the piece of music you're gonna take to play? Because you're gonna be on that island oh, every day. Man. What are you gonna play? Probably. <laughs> Maybe some tenacious D or something, or like something like pretty like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're one of my favorite bands. So. I've heard some 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 wild <laughs> answers. I've heard uh, some reggae. I've heard some, <laughs> heard all kind of answers. Tenacious D, they make you laugh. Yeah, yeah, they sure do. <laughs> I finally got to see them recently. I've been wanting to see them for 15 years, and yeah, I finally got to see them recently. Yeah. Right, right. A couple more questions, and then we'll let you go. We won't keep you forever. But so between Sugar Packs and Glass Town. What would be your favorite venue Ooh. to play? Oh man, um, hmm. Uh, I like big stages, but some of the small stage areas have really good crowds all the time. That's a really good question. Uh, whoo! Um, recently, uh, both Sugar Packs and Glass Town played Beer Stube. And they renovated, I don't know how long ago they renovated it, I haven't been around there. Yeah. But uh, their stage is awesome, and the crowd is awesome. And yeah, like, uh, I think like one weekend Glastown played, and the next weekend Sugar Packs played. So I got to be there two weekends in a row. Nice. And that stage was pretty cool. I like big stages. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like, I mean, Cock and Bull is always really fun. The, the, the crowd there is always killer. The yeah. stage is pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Cock and Bull, Beer Stew. I, we, I just recently played Beer Stew for the very first time within the last month. So gotcha. uh, right now, like that's I like that place. Like a lot. that one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. What is the, uh, one last question. What is the funniest thing that's happened to one of the bands, band members at a gig somewhere? What's the funniest incident that's happened? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> right now, right now. Uh, in Glasstown, we got uh, Jeffrey Oliver. He's a great. He's a solo guy too, and uh, uh, he's <laughs> he's kind of clumsy. We, we we noticed being in the band with him the last year. He's always knocking over a mic stand, or like one time he just fell on the stage. <laughs> and uh, just, it's just so it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> If anybody falls on stage, it's pretty funny. Yeah, it's just like, what are you doing? Were you performing? <laughs> yeah, I think like yeah, it's like in the middle of a song or like between songs even. I don't know. Just. Uh, we kind of a joke, like, oh, he knocked over Mike Stander. Yeah, it's just like, it's, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Jeff, right? Yeah, Jeffrey Oliver. Yeah, he, he's great, great singer, great, great guy. Yeah. All right. So, where, are you guys playing this weekend anywhere? Give up, give us uh, where you're going to be at. This Sugar week? Packs is at Dexter's in Maumee, the old Martini Newsies. Uh, yeah, Sugar Packs. Uh, yeah, Saturday uh, at eight, eight p.m. Yeah, Saturday at eight. Okay. Good. Yeah, good yeah. deal. Good deal. How about Glass Town? Glass Town. We don't have anything going on this weekend. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm playing so often, I'm trying to remember, I think, oh, uh, our next gig is at actually Papa's Tavern on the east side. I uh, was a solo guy there uh, for the last like three years, playing every two weeks for the last three years. And then I was like, hey, I got this new band. They're like, yeah, so we booked a couple gigs there and it's going to be fun. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I've Papa's heard about Papa's cool. Tavern. I'm, we've never been over there, but yeah, I've heard about it though. Yeah, they don't have a lot of, uh, they do have a lot of bands there, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's fun, it's fun. Good, sweet. So, um, we appreciate you coming to hang out with us yeah, today. Awesome, yeah. Uh, well, tell everybody where are your social media packs. Yeah, okay. Uh, you find me on uh, Facebook, Tony Salazar Jr. You find my Facebook music page, Tony Salazar Live Music. You find me on Instagram and Twitter at Tony Salazar 419. Yeah, Tony Salazar 419, Instagram, Twitter too. And what did I say? Yeah, Twitter and uh, Snapchat even. I'm not on Snapchat a whole lot, but <laughs> but yeah, all three names same same thing. Tony Salazar four one nine. Gotcha. Give a shameless plug to to where you're at most days. Uh, Heights. Talk about talk oh, about yeah. Heights. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a new guy at Heights. I've been over there just a few months. I'm loving it, man. Uh, I always wanted to kind of work in a in a guitar shop, talk music all day, fix up guitars, and yeah, I'm loving it. Honestly, I'm loving it. That's how me and you got hooked up together. Just yeah. like hey, just. Yeah. Chatting and talking. I love, I love I love guitar shops. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's yeah. I love it. Honestly, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. When I was growing up, they were all over the place. Yeah. Every weekend, I would beg my mom to drop me off <laughs> at the guitar shop, and I would yeah. find my way home. Yeah. And there was at least six of them in town. Full nice. Score, Penguin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, TMIE, Peeler. The Peeler. They were all yeah, over yeah, the yeah. place. My, my, yeah. Peeler was my spot growing yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
miss those. But heights, yeah. 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 back. So yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, thanks for ha thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for playing. Um, for all everybody on YouTube, check out the King Player TV. Uh, the episodes are coming up pretty quick. If you want me on Facebook, I'm at KP7. Instagram is King Player Official. Twitter is KP71. Again, the YouTube channel coming up will be The King Player TV. Tony, we'd like to uh, thank you again once for coming. Um, give us a little bit more plan on the way out, and we'll see you around town. Thanks, Tony.